knowledge of our government, it was a tremendous shock. As the Fifth Estate was first to report in 1984, the work that Dr. Ewan Cameron oversaw at his Montreal clinic was shocking. Now the story of Cameron's experiments and the victim's struggle for justice have been made into a riveting movie to be broadcast on CBC television this Sunday and Monday nights. For the victims of the sleep room, the horror has never really ended. Even if you don't know the history of the Allen Memorial Institute in Montreal, it looks like a natural setting for a movie. A horror movie, maybe. But then, the truth about what happened to hundreds of psychiatric patients there a long time ago is a horror story. Okay, so we're en route, guys, a piece of Leon. And now, it has become a movie a dramatized account of a bleak chapter in the history of Canadian psychiatry produced by a former Fifth Estate documentary maker, Bernard Zuckerman. Could not make change for a dollar. Got the central character in the TV movie is a world-renowned psychiatrist at the Allen in the early 60s. His name was Dr. Ewan Cameron. Dr. Cameron. It's the classic story of good turning to evil in its most simplistic terms. I mean, Dr. Cameron started off as someone who was probably one of the most enlightened psychiatrists in the country. But then something happened. And whatever happened, suddenly here is this enlightened doctor, this noble doctor, who begins doing more and more and more bizarre experiments on his patients to the point where he is destroying the minds of hundreds of people. These are the days and hours the Inspired by the exuberant post-war optimism in technology, Cameron thought he'd achieved a major scientific breakthrough, how to repair a damaged human mind. The media rejoiced, even coined a phrase which would become a tragically silly oxymoron, beneficial brainwashing. Linda McDonald was a young mother with five children under the age of five when she started feeling low. Her family doctor knew just the man to make her better. I was tired, I was depressed, my back was hurting. And so he said to the children's father, why don't you go to Montreal and visit this Dr. Ewan Cameron, this famous man who has all of these accolades, and have an assessment. So we went. My medical file even says that I took my guitar with me. And uh, that was the end of my life. Within three weeks, Dr. Cameron decided to call me an acute schizophrenic and ship me up to the sleep room. How long did they put you to sleep for? I was in a, a, a coma for 86 days. 86, 86 days of comatose, unbroken sleep. Yeah, total comatose state. The theory was simple. Erase a disturbed mind and start all over again. One of Dr. Cameron's colleagues at the time was Dr. Peter Roper. The aim, I think, really was to wipe out the patterns of thought and behavior which were detrimental to the patient, which were sick, and replace them with healthy patterns of thought and behavior. I think this may have been um, stimulated by the effects of the uh, American prisoners of war in Korea, how they seem to have been brainwashed. And the movie called The Sleep Room dramatizes one technique for brainwashing. Extreme sessions of electroshock therapy, massive jolts of electricity three or four Five. times a day for weeks. Six. According to her hospital records, Linda McDonald had 100 of these treatments. She entered hospital for treatment of what we can now guess was postpartum depression. Her records show the results of shock and radical drug therapy. May 15th shows some confusion. June 3rd knows her name, but that's about all. June 11th doesn't know her name. I was, had to be toilet trained. I was a vegetable. I had no identity, I had no memory, I'd never existed in the world before. A, like a baby. Just like a baby that has to be toilet trained. She eventually went home, her depression gone, and her entire previous life gone with it. 
And this is this is one of the twins. In, 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 it was in 62 before I went to the island. And this is the same one, I think. I just look at the pictures and I know who that is, who they are. But I don't remember them as my children at all. Hmm. I mean, I know that they came from my body. Um, but there's no... Th that's all. I don't know, and that's because I was told that. Hmm. So these are my children. Robert Logie was little more than a child himself when he was referred to Dr. Cameron. He was 18. He had a sore leg. His doctor thought it was all in his head and sent him to the Allen. Like Linda McDonald, he went through a nightmare of shock therapy and drugs, including LSD. Well, I was given LSD about every second day and uh, injected. And uh, it, sometimes it was mixed with sodium amytal and other drugs. Idiot part one on one take two. Yep. Most of the drugs were experimental, but seemed